2 Corinthians. We'll be looking at chapter 6. Um, and the, the title of this message is Ministries Responsibility. And you're going right now, whew, that's not me. Well, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, not because it's on the, the, the bulletin where it says ministers, every member, um, but uh, because God's word has, has put that responsibility that we are ministers. Uh, we looked at last week where Paul talked about that, that we have been given a ministry of reconciliation and a message of reconciliation. We'll look back at some of those passages as, as we read through this passage, but um, um, it's a responsibility and, and it's hard. And Paul talks about, uh, I was like, okay, is this about ministry's responsibility or the cost of ministry? Yes. So, um, so we're going to be looking at this, this passage uh, together. Uh, first of all, we're going to be looking, one of the responsibilities of ministry is the recipients. You know, they will stand before God on how they received um, the message of reconciliation. Um, and then the speaker's responsibility to speak um, what God has has said, be reconciled. And so before we begin, uh, let's, let's pray together. And Jesus, I thank you. I thank you first. You are the one who did the ministry of reconciliation. You're the one who paid the cost. You're the one who took what broke us out of relationship with God, our sin. You took that upon yourself. And that Jesus, now your good news is there, that you have paid it, that you are Lord, and that you rose conquering sin and death if we would put our faith on you and you alone. Now, as those who've received that, help us to share that. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I mentioned that we're going to, first of all, listen about, hear from God's word about the hearer's responsibility. Uh, that, that, okay, here's the message. And, and you might be a hearer today. Now, again, this applies to the gospel being shared, but this also applies to anything that the word of God shares. What will you do with what God shares? Will you by faith, receive God, that's what you say, and, and therefore, by the power of your spirit, I will do. Um, and this is vital, crucial, obviously, for the gospel, for someone who's lost, but also for believers in every aspect of our lives. Uh, so don't think, okay, I could check out on this. I'm gonna, but the hearer's responsibility, the hearer's this morning, as you're hearing God's word speak, believers, we are held accountable as we look and see what God says. So here's our hearer's responsibility. One, here's the obvious one, to hear. <laughs> to hear the message. Uh, he says in verse 1, working together with him. This is Paul talking about and those who are ministers of reconciliation, the ministers with the message of sharing how people will be saved, um, uh, working together with him then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. That, that you do not receive, you have been graced by hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. What will you do with it? Um, the, the people who are in, in the Corinthian church, and some are not saved, just like in a church, there are people who are not saved. And they're reading this, and, and, and the Spirit is convicting them about their lostness. Don't hear it in vain. First of all, hear the message of God. But then, what do we do with it? Now, now you're going, okay, now what's the message again? Look back with me on, on the, the previous couple verses, uh, the end of chapter 5. It says, therefore we who are believers are ambassadors of Christ. We're his representatives. We're his messengers. God making his appeal through us. 
And so he's like, all right, here's the appeal. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Be made right with God. And then he says, here's how God offers that. For our sake, he made him, Jesus, to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God of God, that Jesus took the payment of my sin and your sin, and he fully paid it. And he says, I have paid for your sin. I offer my righteousness to you. Will you believe? Will you just hear that and do nothing and therefore receiving grace in vain? Or will you respond? So the hearer's responsibility, first, you got to hear. You listen. You know, um, uh, you know, and, uh, th 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 there's sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard. Uh, the minister might be preaching on and on and on and on and on, and he, he becomes like the Charlie Brown adults, and all you're hearing is wah, 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 you know. Focus. Ask God's help. Help me to understand your word as I read it, as I preach it. Um, and so, hear the message. That's the first part. Heed the message. Heed the message. There's a third part. I'll add that word later. It says in verse 2, For he says, In a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I helped you. And that's a, that's a quotation from Isaiah 49, but again, it's, it's applicable to them there. That, that okay, I, 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 I hear you, and, and in a day of salvation, I've helped you. I've, I've delivered you. And he says, behold, now is the favorable time. You know, when do we respond? When do we heed the message? Did you hear it? Now is a favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And that's your blank. Heed the message now. As soon as you realize what God's message, and again, it, it could be the gospel, and you're like, okay, if, if, as soon as the Holy Spirit impresses on you, you need Christ. You need to repent of your sins and turn to him. That's the time. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I'll do it later. Oh, I'll do it. Same thing with whatever is before you with God's word, and it strikes you, and the Spirit brings conviction on you. When do you respond? Now. Now. It says in Hebrews 3, a similar thing. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today... If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as, as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness. See to it, says later, see to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. So when you hear the word, you hear the message of God. Again, whether it be about salvation or you're a believer and, and it has something to do with a relationship in your life that you need to make right, maybe to forgive, or it could be about, you know, so, something that's had a hold of your life that you need to repent of. See to it that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. I'll take care of that later. I'll take care of it later. No, he's saying... When you hear it, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Every time you say, not now, not now, not now, the heart becomes harder. It's kind of like, and I, 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 I'm getting ready to go on a mission trip, and I'll probably have a hammer in hand. I don't have hammers in my hand or any other tool very often, and it's a very good thing. There's good reasons why not. But, but whatever tool it is or whatever that I end up having after the first day, if I don't wear gloves, guess what I'm going to have? A blister. And then I'll have a blister upon a blister on a blister. But if I would every, you know, do that every day and, and keep holding a hammer, guess what? calluses will develop and I won't have the blisters and all that. Now that's a good thing when it comes to 
being able to do work with a tool, but it's not a good thing to the heart that every time you hear the message of God and you don't respond with the yes, Lord, that's another layer, another layer, another layer. See to it that none of us has a sinful, unbelieving heart. That's the hearer's responsibility. <laughs> Could probably end right there. But this message is about now you're the one who is sharing. You're the one that's sharing. Uh, it, it, it could. Most, most cases in, in the context here, it's talking about sharing this message of reconciliation. But maybe, maybe God's put on your heart to go to a believer, a brother in Christ, and, and there's something, some issue in, in, in their life, and either they need encouragement or they need correction, uh, they need instruction. You know, uh, again, you know, what's our responsibility? And so the speaker's responsibility go, goes to verse, verse 3, strive for integrity. Strive for integrity. He says in verse 3 and 4, We put no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found in our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way. And then he goes on and talks about the various ways. Uh, the word obstacle is, uh, is also translated a stumbling block. Um, because listen, listen. <laughs> If the hearer has a problem with the speaker, there's going to be a disconnect. If there's something about me that you have an issue with, it's going to be harder for you to hear. That's just the way it is. I think the Holy Spirit should, you know, you still listen to him and all that. Who cares who the speaker is? But again, he's saying, Paul's going, listen, I don't want anything about me to get in the way of the ministry that I have. And so I'm trying to live in such a way to be at peace, if all possible, with all men. Uh, that, that there's no obstacle about my life, uh, about my ministry that would hinder you from receiving it. So the first thing, responsibility, is strive for integrity. Here's the next thing. Endure. Endure the sufferings. So how is he commending himself is, is how he responds to sufferings. By, by great endurance, some, some translations have, have patience um, uh, in, in afflictions. Uh, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, and hunger. You know, Paul is just sharing, first of all, in, in general, there's been afflictions. That's just the word that there's been pressure on me. And listen, you try to do the ministry of Jesus, there'll be pressure on you. And the word, again, I say it's a better translation to say endurance instead of patience because patience is like, okay, you get in the, the line at Walmart and you're there and you're sitting and you're being nice and quiet and not griping to your spouse next to you. I'm always patient, aren't I? But anyway, um, you know, so, so um, you know, now, now that, that, that can be a patient. Endurance means I am going through difficulty and I'm not giving up because ministry will bring difficulty by great in endurance in afflictions when, when life is pressuring you, in hardships, in calamities. And then he starts getting specific in beatings. And later on, he tells how many times he's been beaten um, uh, in, in riots. There'll be mobs of people that, that got together and tried to kick him out of towns. That happened over and over in Paul's ministry. In labors, all the things, the sleepless nights that he's had, in times that he's gone without food, so the ministry would continue our responsibility it's going to be tough endure too many people we've gotten soft one little thing somebody says something to me oh no no some 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 some, some uh, they hurt my feelings uh, uh, and then they stop going now listen somebody's hurt your feelings you need to go to them Make it right. That's what God's Word says. Our, you know, again, endure. Here's the next one. Grow in the Spirit's fruit. 
inner qualities he mentions here by purity, by knowledge, by patience, kindness, the, the Holy Spirit in general, genuine love. Now, some of those are, are on, are on there are the fruits of the Holy Spirit, but he's the one that brings our heart into purity. He's the one who gives us the knowledge of, of ministry. He's the one who brings those fruits of the Spirit of patience, kindness, and love. These are to be inner qualities. But listen, listen, Paul is writing, I've commended myself in this and that these things were on the inside were evident flowing out in his life. Now, trust God's equipping. Because I know what most people, when you talk about ministry, yeah, but I can't, or oh, but I can't. Listen, you know what ministry is? It's what God can. It's what God can in a willing vessel. So trust God's equipping. Well, what, what, what is God equipping me with? First of all, by truthful speech, by the truth, by God's word. By, by not going and just saying what's popular or dumbing down the truth or anything like that, but saying, here's what God's Word, this is not what Randy Gude says, this is what God's Word says. That's all you want from me, right? You may not like it, I may not like it, but God's Word is the standard. And he's given it to us by sharing the truth. As, and that's what we learned in Vacation Bible School this week about the truth of God and, 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 and that we don't need to go with all the various ways of lies in this world. Here's the other thing he says, and the power of God. Listen, the one thing about the equipment of, of, of God for ministry, you know, again, here's where people, people go, and, and, and it's very easy. Well, I can't, I can't. You're right, but God's power, if God is leading you to do something, to say something, he will give you the power. He will give you the power. And then lastly, <laughs> with weapons of righteousness, for the right hand and for the left. Now, let me ask you, what are weapons used for? Kill. <laughs> to kill. Okay. Well, let's step back a little bit um, uh, of that. <laughs> no one go over to Basil's house. Anyway, just kidding. See, <laughs> if you're bringing weapons somewhere, where are you going? To a? Okay, battle. Listen. You go into ministry. You go into battle. You go into battle. Now, again, and all, all South Paws, I, I apologize to you for this, but typically the weapons of the right hand were the offensive weapons, and the weapon of the left hand was the armor, was was the shield. And again, that might be what he's saying there, or he's just saying, I'm ready to fight this way and that way and kill him. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> um, yeah, and so, so here it is, the weapons. God has given us weapons um, so that because it is going to be battle, it is going to be uphill, it is going to be storming uh, the, the strongholds. But look what Paul writes in, in, in Ephesians 6. He says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord. Again, we just read, and it's in the power of God. That, that's something we have to trust, and that's part of the equipment. Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, the right-handed stuff and the left-handed stuff and the armor stuff, all that, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of, over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Listen, the battle is not just what you're seeing physically. But again, God is all, you know, greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. And it says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, 
to stand firm. And I'm not going to go through the rest. That's a whole, that'd be a whole other message of the armor of God. But trust that God will equip you as you step in faith in the ministry. You have his truth, you have his power, and you have his armor. Now, the other speaker's responsibility. Face misunderstanding. It will happen. There will be some people that you talk to and they'll be like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and, and they'll be the same, you'll say the same thing to somebody else and they'll want to throw rocks at you. Just face it. That's how it's going to be. Look what Jesus said to his, his, um, um, his disciples. If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. <laughs> Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep you also yours. And that last line there, you know, there's going to be people who reject the word. They reject Christ and they, the same people are going to reject you. There are going to be people who will accept the word and accept Christ and, and therefore they will be very receptive to you. But just realize you're going to face misunderstanding. And, and there's, there's nine different contrasting things that, that Paul says here. Um, he, he says this, through honor and dishonor. As I'm going about my ministry, there's people going, wow, look at Paul, Paul the apostle, woo, Paul, go Paul, yay. And then there's people, ugh, Paul. Paul says, that's the way it is. Through slander. Now, did you hear what Paul said? Oh, can you? He, did you hear? Yeah, 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 all the things that people could say. People will speak against you. Then there'll be people who praise. Now, all praise goes to God, but people will praise. Thank you for sharing that. We're treated as imposters. On one hand, you know, you're a bunch of fakers. You're, you're just in it. You're a Charlton. You're trying to get it for money. You're trying to... Yet we're true. As unknown, Paul who? <laughs> okay, man, I got Randy who? Okay. Um, and yet well known. Uh, the believers got to know who Paul was. As dying. Oh, we live. I mean, I don't know how many times people tried to take his life. Eventually they did. It was God's time saying, it's over, you know, but right now, we still live. I still got breath. I'm still going to do ministry. As punished. Again, later on he talks about, I was beaten, I was flogged, I was whipped, I was yet not killed. As sorrowful. Yet in the midst of the sorrow, find joy and always rejoicing. As poor, following in the ministry, you, you, you many times, you know, you, you give up. And Paul gave up his whole livelihood and everything. Yet through the ministry of reconciliation, making many rich. Having nothing, yet possessing everything. There'll be times you're like, ah, what, what do I have to give? What do I have to give? Yet you have Christ to give. So one of the things, one, and this is why so many people don't share. Just realize, there will be people who will say, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And there'll be people who will greatly resist 
what you have to say. Even from believers. Because he says to this church, this church that he started, this church that he poured his life into for two years, he says, we've spoken freely to you. Corinthians, our heart is wide open. You're not restricted by you, by, by us, but you're restricted in your own affections. And, and again, there's some weird words there. If you read that in the original language, or you, if, you, if you have the King James, you're going to say something about bowels in there. <laughs> you're, you have restricted bowels. Okay, yeah, I do. Anyway, no, yeah, I mean, you're like, wait, but what that was is that that's where they thought emotion and feeling was and all that. And he's basically saying, you know, you're restricting an open heart, an open emotion, an open relationship with us. You know, and, and so, so that's what he, he's talking about there. You know, it's just, like you're not restricted by us we have a open arms open love open open joy open you do something and it, it hurts it's going to make us sorrowful you know you do something it's making well you know so we're not restricted but you're restricted in your own affections you're holding back and again the whole situation here in, in Corinth was you had these people who were coming in and they did not have the gospel they had a false gospel and but they were very winsome very popular very you know they, they seemed to click a lot of the boxes that the people wanted to hear and, and so they started pushing Paul aside and this is why he writes this book, because it wasn't about Paul wanting people to like Paul. It was Paul wanting people to love Jesus. And they had, he, he, it was the message that he was defending. In return, I speak to his children, widen your hearts also. So, so listen, listen, even among believers, there's going to be misunderstanding. There's going to be a push away. There's going to be... Face it, deal with relationships biblically, make it right, and move on, and move on. Now, as I've been speaking, there are those who are hearers. Maybe this message was for you. As, as Paul said earlier, <laughs> here's the message of reconciliation. I implore you, be reconciled, be made right with God. How? By what Jesus did. He who did not know sin, he was a per lived a perfect life, became sin. That all my sin, all your sin, all the world's sin was placed on Christ and on the cross he paid for the sin. None of us deserve heaven except Christ. And he lived the life that deserved heaven, and he said, I will take what you deserve. I will give you what I deserve. Repent of your sin and put your faith only in me. So I implore you, be reconciled to God through Christ Jesus. For those who already have, you've been given the same ministry. Who in your life can you share what Christ has done? You know what? <laughs> Make sure you're living a, a life of integrity. D don't be the excuse why they would reject Christ. Be willing to endure. It's going to be hard. Be willing to be misunderstood. Because listen, what's, what's at stake here? Someone's eternal soul. If they die without Christ, for eternity, they will be in hell. That's why I implore you, 
be reconciled. And I implore my fellow believers, be a part of the ministry of reconciliation. And share to your loved ones how they can be saved. Jesus, how Paul took this serious. And I thank you for those who, who it is their heart's burden as well. God, for we who have already truly received you, Christ, and it has changed our lives, Help us, help us, help me uh, not to forget what was done for us that somebody dared to share. And I heard the grace of God. And I did not receive it in vain. By your Holy Spirit, You convict. You brought me to where I needed to be on my knees as a sinner to look to the Savior. My prayer is for we as believers to never forget that and give others that opportunity. People that you've put in our path, in our lives, even this past week at Vacation Bible School. And then my prayer for those who are in this room or maybe hearing on the internet or on a CD or, or some other way. They do not know you. Not... not Help them know that it's not about church membership. It's not about walking down the aisle or repeating a prayer. The Holy Spirit, I ask for your convicting work on their life. That they would know and they would hear the message. And they would heed the message now. That they would not put it off. That they would not harden their heart. That even after this service is over, that they would make a beeline to talk with me and I could share with them how they can be saved. Holy Spirit, do your work. And you receive all the glory, Christ. Amen. Amen.